Good morning. I'm Stephen Lee. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian Church of Mesquite, and I'm also the teacher of the Discipleship Sunday School class. Today we continue with our study of the Gospel of John, and I'd like to remind you that we're using as our curriculum the Daily Bible Study Series by Professor William Barclay, and we're also using the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which is the version that we use at our church. So let's get started. Today we have just one scripture lesson. You might remember that in the last lesson, it was ended by Jesus claiming to be the Son of God, which is blasphemy to the Jews. And so that's where we're getting started today. John 10, verses 31 through 39. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus replied, I have showed you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are God's? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified is blaspheming because I said that I am God's son? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. To the Jews, Jesus' statement that he and the Father were one was flat blasphemy. It was the invasion by a man of the place which belonged to God alone. The Jewish law laid down the penalty of stoning for blasphemy. One who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be put to death, and the whole congregation shall stone the blasphemer. That from Leviticus 24, verse 16. So the Jews made their preparations to stone Jesus. They went and fetched stones to fling at him. Jesus met their hostility with three arguments. His first argument was he told them that he had spent all his days doing good works, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and comforting the sorrowing, deeds so full of help and power and beauty that they obviously came from God. So for which of these deeds did they wish to stone him? Their answer was that it was not for anything he had done that they wished to stone him, but for the claims that he was making. His second argument was his claim that he was the Son of God. To meet their attack, he used two illustrations. The first is a purely Jewish illustration, which is very difficult for us to understand. He quoted Psalm 82, verse 6. That psalm is a warning to unjust judges to cease from unjust ways and to defend the poor and the innocent. That appeal concludes, I say, you are gods, children of the Most High, all of you. The judge is commissioned by God to be God to the people. This idea comes out very clearly in certain of the regulations in Exodus. Exodus 21, 1 through 6 tells how the Hebrew servant may go free in the seventh year. And as the authorized version has it, verse 6 says, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. But in Hebrew, the word which is translated judges is actually Elohim, which means God's. The same form of expression is used in Exodus 22, 9 and 28. 
So scripture said of those who were specially commissioned to some task by God, that they were gods. So Jesus said, if scripture can speak like that about such people, why should I not speak like that myself? Jesus claimed two things. First, he was consecrated by God to do a special task. And the word for consecrate is hagiazin, the verb from which comes the adjective hagios, which means holy or hallowed. These words always have the idea of rendering a person or a place or a thing different from other persons, places, or things, because it is set aside for a special purpose or a task. For, for example, the Sabbath is consecrated, based on Exodus 20, verse 11. The altar is hallowed, Leviticus 16, 19. Now, we don't have an altar in the Presbyterian church, but we have a communion table. And I remember quite clearly getting in trouble for crossing in front of the communion table when I was a young man. Priests are consecrated, that from 2 Chronicles 26, 18. And the prophet is consecrated, Jeremiah 1, verse 5. When Jesus said that God had consecrated him, he meant that he had been set apart from others. And he had been set apart because God had given him a very special task. The very fact that Jesus used this word shows how conscious he was of his special task. His second illustration was that God had dispatched him into the world. The word is the one which could be used for sending a messenger or an ambassador, or even an army. Jesus thought of himself not so much as coming into the world, but as being sent into the world. His act, his coming, was an act of God. And he came to do the task which God had given him to do. So Jesus said in the old days it was possible for Scripture to speak of judges as gods, because they were commissioned by God to bring his truth and justice into the world. Now I have been dispatched into the world by God. How can you object if I call myself the Son of God? I am only doing what the Scripture does. This is one of those biblical arguments which is difficult for us to understand, but a Jewish rabbi would have found it very convincing. His third argument was for the Jews to accept his deeds, even if they did not accept his words. Words can be disputed, but deeds cannot be disputed. Jesus is the perfect teacher in that what he does, in that he does not base his claims on what he says, but what he does. His invitation to the Jews was to base their verdict on him, not on what he said, but what he did. And that is a test which all his followers, us, ought to be able and willing to meet. Thank you for joining me again today. God bless each and every one of you.